Hello, folks. Welcome to Cudlow. I'm Larry Cudlow. All right, two major topics tonight. First, a day after AG Merrick Garland's Where's the Beef press conference, former President Trump's search warrant has been unsealed. The president himself has said he has never had a problem showing all the documents to whomever wants to see them. As we noted last night, the search warrant and the redacted inventory list is of virtually no use whatsoever. The only thing that really matters is the application for the warrant, which will contain affidavits of probable cause for evidence of federal crimes. The only way that's going to ever see the light of day is if an actual case is brought in court and the affidavits are shared by the prosecution to the defendant, with the defendant. We're a long way from that. But that's actually where the beef will be found, if it ever is. Now, I see one of the search warrant leak stories from my pal Betsy Woodruff Swan of Politico. It's reporting that federal law enforcement was investigating Mr. Trump for removal or destruction of records, obstruction of an investigation, and violating the Espionage Act. I find these charges to be utterly not believable, completely and utterly not believable. Because the former president was fully cooperating with the FBI this past spring, the idea of some kind of imminent risk of documents being destroyed or concealed seems totally far-fetched, as uh, ACE reporter John Solomon has reported. What's more, the FBI was so crazed about document destruction or concealment, why did they wait three days from the time they got the warrant until they actually raided Mar-a-Lago and Palm Beach? Well, perhaps they got in a couple of rounds of golf at the beautiful Mar-a-Lago golf course with one of their inside sources. As far as documents labeled confidential or secret or top secret with an SCI, that's a sensitive compartmentative information, I can tell you from my own experience in the White House, most of that stuff, indeed the vast majority of that stuff, is unnecessarily classified. You can get the bulk of it from your local newspaper. As the late Senator Pat Moynihan wrote several decades ago in his book, Secrecy, The American Experience, the federal government's obsession over non-secret secrecy is absolutely insane. Now, if the secret codes to the nuclear football were hanging around, that would be a problem. But I kind of doubt that, don't you? Frankly, I still this, uh, see this outrageous DOJ FBI invasion of Mar-a-Lago as a January 6th fishing expedition to weaponize law enforcement for the simple political motive of keeping Mr. Trump off the ballot in 2024. Show me some real beef to the contrary, and I will change my mind. So far, no go. And by the way, let me just say, President Trump, like any other president, can declassify whatever documents he or she wishes to declassify. Meanwhile, our second big story tonight is the imminent, unfortunately, the imminent passage of the so-called Inflation Reduction Bill, which neither reduces inflation, nor the near-term budget gap, nor provide any economic growth incentives to fight recession. This bill is another massive attack in the war against fossil fuels. It's a huge giveaway to special interest groups and wealthy individuals in the name of global warming. Meanwhile, middle-class families will face a sizable tax hike. Those earning less than 100000 a year face a probable 77 percent higher taxes. There's a new EPA sh uh, slush fund government bank, just what we need, a new government bank. There are 87,000 IRS agents, apparently armed to the teeth, they're going to chase after so-called unreported income from middle and lower income folks, Uber drivers, the gig economy, waitresses, and unincorporated small businesses. Retirees and pensioners will face a new tax on their savings, as will small pass-through businesses. Roughly $750 billion in new spending, and that combined with nearly $300 billion in the CHIPS Plus corporate welfare bill. All that threatens higher, not lower, inflation. That's a trillion dollars. Drug price controls are going to make life-saving drugs more, not less, expensive. It is a pathetic piece of legislation. It is the wrong bill at the wrong time for the wrong country. We tried hard to save America and kill the bill. 
I think we should also try hard to stop these crazy hoaxes perpetrated against former President Trump. All right, that's my take.